Hey there, everybody. Well, at the risk of sharing maybe a little bit too much Im uh, information, I did want to tell you um, about uh, a couple of thoughts I've had uh, recently as I've been trying to interact with people and look at uh, different things posted online and all of that. Um, we'll start it off with a little bit of a story as all good uh, videos start. I recently um, uh, did a uh, inventory to look at uh, occupational and work strengths and weaknesses that I have. A um, little bit high information, but um, I am currently um, in the uh, in interest of uh, perhaps a change of careers. Um, and uh, I, as I was doing this inventory and looking at different things, the person administrating it uh, remarked to me that um, I seem to be a person who doesn't um, particularly enjoy conflict, you know, and that really is kind of the case for me. I'm the kind of guy who, though I'm not necessarily a peacemaker, I'm much more interested in sort of negotiating and um, coming up with some sort of compromise for both parties to be satisfied rather than uh, trying to necessarily push for a win and push for a victory. Um, I don't know about the way that the rest of you feel. It's always hard to put your uh, yourself in someone else's shoes because you just don't know what it feels like and what it's like to be someone else, right? For example, my daughter, who now has eyeglasses, uh, came home from school today and we had the glasses. I went and got them earlier this morning. She put them on and said, wow, I feel like I can see in 4K. I don't know what that's like. I don't have eyeglasses. I don't know what it's like to uh, need that. Um, at any rate, um, when it comes to a uh, conflict, I've never been able to fully understand the people who uh, live and thrive for competition and everything in life. Maybe the reason why I wasn't uh, necessarily the best athlete in the world. Um, but I'll tell you what, when it comes to things like communicating with other people, you know, whether it's online or whether it's offline, I really do think that we might need to sort of like simmer and tone it down a little bit, right? Now, you know, the way that I am, you know, I like to uh, get in a little bit of debate and sort of like fling little things at people and say, ah, but what about this and what about that and so on and so forth. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. If you've been following me and the stuff that I write, you know that um, I uh, win some and lose most. Um, and that's kind of the way it is, but it's a little bit of fun. And at the very least, um, you know, we can talk with each other and interact. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about, you know. I've noticed a thing, and it's not a baseball-specific thing. You see this just all the time online. You know, it's this thing where people tend to almost, like, take glee in the idea of, like, getting one over on the person that they're talking with, you know, as if conversation itself were some sort of competition in which we have to show whether we are correct and the other person's wrong or vice versa. Um, and uh, we hope to prove our points and to make our points um, so clearly that everybody will agree. And then, I, I mean, I don't know, like, you know, go uh, be in awe of our greatness and, and wonder and all of this stuff. And it's really just not the right approach. I mean, you know, it's okay, I think, when you're talking with somebody about, I don't know, baseball stats or whether the Mets should sign um, uh, Shohei Otani or whatever it is. It's okay to have an opinion. It's okay to voice the opinion, right? But we got to tone it down a little bit, right? We don't want to say like, oh, you know, this is my opinion and you're an idiot or you're a moron or, you know, anybody with um, the right state of mind can see this or can see that. People can disagree. People can even disagree about things that involve statistics, right? Statistical interpretation is not something that is set in stone and involves truth with a capital T, as we've discussed before. Um, it's fine to disagree, and I think that um, it's healthy for us to disagree, but it's definitely not healthy to disagree and then to start making disparaging comments toward another person. And the funny thing is that when you do that, believe it or not, the power and strength of your own argument ends up becoming uh, deflated quite a bit. Now, I will tell you this, I'm not one of the people who thinks that um, there was some sort of golden age in America in which this sort of thing doesn't happen. I don't think that because I've read history, and I've read enough to know that there were all sorts of disagreements all the time that looked a lot like these disagreements that drive me nuts today. The difference is that in the past, there were a lot more filters around our media, right? So uh, if you were reading, I don't know, like a newspaper from 1908, you're probably not going to read a whole bunch of uh, racial slurs and curse words and um, angry comments from one person to another. What you're going to read is um, sort of uh, things that may be strong, may be weaker statements that are heavily couched in very carefully calculated language. Um, and uh, though it might not quite be as forceful, um, in some cases you will find that there were people who had very persuasive language and very persuasive arguments, right? Um, I do think that you do see the power of persuasion today. However, I don't think it's quite as strong as it once was, in large part because there's this, like, uh, I don't know if I would call it uh, movement or there's like this general opinion or what in our society that says, you know, instead of being nice about it, you got to just take off the gloves from the start and be really blunt and frank with people and tell them exactly what you think of them. 
I don't know. I mean, everybody has a different opinion on this subject and on the way to do it. Uh, many of you know I um, worked or worked. I uh, volunteered as a missionary um, in Germany back in uh, 2003 to 2005. Uh, about what 20 years ago now. I feel old. And um, I tell you, the German people I spoke with were some of the most blunt people I've ever heard in my life. And, you know, as much fun as it is to talk with somebody who's very blunt, after a while, you don't want to talk with them anymore because you get a little bit tired of hearing about how this is idiotic, this is wrong, this is moronic, or this thing that you're trying to do would never work in a million years, even if you proved them wrong last time, right? Um, it was around that time I started hanging out a little bit more with uh, the uh, students from China that we knew who were much different in their um, rhetorical approach. Not to say that they were necessarily right or wrong, but um, it makes you feel a little bit better to talk with somebody who um, will treat you with respect and who actually looks like they want to talk with you, even if they're not interested in what you have to say, than it is to uh, try to talk with somebody who wants to you know, th uh, slam doors in your face or um, who wants to uh, punch you in the nose things that did happen to me. So um, that's just a little bit of an example, right? I mean, you know, honey does attract, you know, more people than, you know, vinegar. It's absolutely the case. Um, and it's sort of something to keep in mind. It's fine to disagree and it's fine to talk about um, topics that are hot button or, you know, things that um, to take positions that are extremely unpopular, um, such as the ones that you hear in this channel from time to time. But I think we should make sure that um, when we engage with each other that uh, we don't try to belittle others and try to lift ourselves up. Because the truth is, man, it doesn't work. Uh, you think it works, but it really doesn't. Anyway, there you go. That's uh, sort of my opinion on this. Love to know what all of you think, and uh, we'll have a little bit more action for you tomorrow. Bye-bye.